So we begin with Prophet Isa alayhi salam. And if you look at the title, Prophet Isa ibn Maryam. Isa alayhi salam, ibn Maryam means son of Maryam salamullahi alayha. Prophet Isa alayhi salam is the only prophet in the Holy Quran that has been mentioned as the son of someone. No other prophet has been mentioned in this way. Many prophets have been mentioned in the Holy Quran, but none have been mentioned son of so and so. It is only in regards to Prophet Isa alayhi salam. What is the reason? The reason is so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala removes this confusion from the mind and actually embeds this in a person's mind, in the Muslim's mind, in a believer's mind, that Isa alayhi salam is not the son of God. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not have any children. Isa alayhi salam is not the son of God, but rather he is the son of Maryam salamullahi alayha. And the attribution is to the mother because Isa alayhi salam we know was born without a father. And this in itself is miraculous and he was miraculously born without a father. So he is known as Isa ibn Maryam, Isa son of Maryam salamullahi alayha. And he's a great prophet of Islam. He is a great prophet of Islam. He is not just a prophet of the Christians, but he is also a prophet of Islam. The Jews, they reject Prophet Isa alayhi salam. When Isa alayhi salam came, they rejected Isa alayhi salam. Although within uh, their scriptures, within their books, they were actually told that there will be a, a, a Messiah that will come. There will be a prophet that will come. But they rejected Prophet Isa alayhi salam when he came. So they are still waiting for their Messiah. And this goes into that discussion, which I don't want to go into, uh, in regards to what is happening today in the world, especially with uh, the conflict of, uh, between, uh, within Israel and the Palestinian conflict. This actually all relates back to that, where the Jews are waiting uh, for their Messiah. Now at the bottom, on every slide, what I have done is I've mentioned some quotes from the Holy Quran, which relate to that particular slide. So at the bottom, you will find there's a verse from Surah Al-Baqarah that I've mentioned, that say, O Muslims, we believe in Allah, and that which has been revealed to us, and that which has been revealed before us, to Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam, to Prophet Ismail alayhi salam, to Ishaq alayhi salam, Ya'qub alayhi salam, and their offspring. And that which has been given to Musa alayhi salam, Prophet Isa alayhi salam, and that which has been given to the prophets from their Lord, we make no distinction between any of them, and to him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we have submitted. So this verse from the Holy Quran, Surah Al-Baqarah, is a reiteration or reconfirmation of what we believe. So we believe in all of the prophets. If we reject any of the prophets, we cannot remain a Muslim. We cannot remain a Muslim. So our iman should be every Prophet. And approximately 1,24,000 Prophets came from Approximately 124,000 Prophets came from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Approximately we say. We don't know the exact number. There could be more, but we don't know. It's approximately 124,000 Prophets. Some of them had been, have been mentioned in the Quran. Some of them have been mentioned by the Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wasallam. And there are many that we have not been told about. Other Prophets have been mentioned in previous scriptures that came. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Holy Quran that there are some Prophets we have told you about and there are some Prophets that we have not told you about. So approximately 124, 
thousand prophets. This is not the exact number, लेकिन हम कहते हैं कम ओबेश अप्रॉक्सीमेटली ज्यादा भी हो सकते हैं दे खुड भी मो प्रॉफिट ईसा अलैहिस्सलाम फ्रॉम द सीरीज ऑफ प्रॉफिट्स प्रॉफिट आदम अलैहिस्सलाम बीइंग द फर्स्ट प्रॉफिट सो वी बिलीव अबाउट प्रॉफिट आदम अलैहिस्सलाम एज बीइंग नॉट ओनली द फर्स्ट ह्यूमन बीइंग बट आल्सो द फर्स्ट प्रॉफिट सो ही इज द फर्स्ट प्रॉफिट द क्रिश्चियंस डोंट बिलीव आदम अलैहिस्सलाम टू बी अ प्रॉफिट they only believe him to be the first human being so it's important that we um, understand this prophet adam alayhi salam he is not only the first human being but he is also the first prophet to to adam alayhi salam pehle bashar bhi hain aur pehle nabi bhi hain so prophet adam alayhi salam the first prophet prophet muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam sayyidna rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the last prophet in this series of prophets that came the prophet that came before our prophet is prophet isa alayhi salam so there is a special relationship between our prophet alayhi salatu wassalam and prophet isa alayhi salam there is a special relationship one relationship is that he is the prophet that came before our prophet muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wasallam that's the first relationship and the prophet alayhi salatu wasalam mentioned this that he said that i am the most closest to prophet isa alayhi salam i have more right to prophet isa alayhi salam more than anyone else so we find that the prophet alayhi salatu wasalam to say that i have more right or i am more closer to prophet isa alayhi salam this is actually a lesson for muslims who believe and follow in the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasalam that we also have more right to prophet isa alayhi salam and we should remember prophet isa alayhi salam and we should speak about prophet isa alayhi salam and the prophet alayhi salatu wasalam you know regarding the birth of prophet isa alayhi salam we find a hadith in sunan an nasa'i that prophet isa alayhi uh, prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wasallam prophet muhammad sallallahu alayhi was actually honored the birthplace of prophet isa alayhi salam حضور نبی کریم صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم جب معراج شریف پہ گئے یہ حدیث سنن النسائی میں ہے that when prophet uh, uh, when our prophet صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم went on the night journey of miraj he came across the birth place of isa alayhi salam and sayyidna jibril alayhi salam the angel jibril alayhi salam said to the prophet صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم that you need to pray here you need to pray here pray to rak'at here at the place where prophet isa alayhi salam was born so the prophet alayhi salatu wasalam prayed nafil prayed to rak'at at the place where prophet isa alayhi salam was born uh, baytul ahmin so bethlehem in arabic is baytul ahmin this is mentioned in the hadith that the prophet alayhi salatu wasalam prayed to rak'at so we know from there that the birthplace of isa alayhi salam prophet alayhi salatu wasalam paid his respects and he prayed there So this in itself shows that the places where the prophets are born they are also honorable they are also honorable and it it became the sunnah of the prophet to actually pay his respects at the place where a prophet is born so this shows this special relationship between the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and prophet isa alaihi salam and regards to the day the prophet isa alaihi salam was born we find in the holy quran in surah maryam Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala quotes prophet Isa alayhi salam as saying was salamu alayya yawm wulidtu peace be upon the day that i was born peace be upon the day that i was born to Isa alayhi salam ne apne paidaish ke din par kaha ke mujh par salam ho us din ke jab meri wiladat hui so therefore like i said our concern is with the birth of Isa alayhi salam because it's a miraculous birth is an honorable birth and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent peace and blessings on the day that prophet isa alayhi salam was born and prophet isa alayhi salam he gave the bashara of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam so every prophet that came the 124000 prophets that came one after the other they all had a duty they all had a responsibility all of them they gave the message of tawhid 
They gave the message about their prophethood. They taught whatever revelation Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent to those prophets. But at the same time, they had a duty. That duty was to inform their people that there will be a last prophet that will come. And you will have to believe in that last prophet. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to each prophet that if that prophet comes within your time, you also have to believe in him and you have to help him. So every prophet gave this news about Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Prophet Isa alayhi salam on the other hand, as mentioned in the Quran, he said, after me, after me, this final prophet will come. His name will be Ismuhu Ahmad. As mentioned in the Holy Quran, and the verse of uh, of this is right at the bottom. Okay, so he said, after me, the prophet that will come will be his name will be Ismuhu Ahmad. Now the prophet salam's name on the heavens is Ahmad, and his name upon the earth is Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. There's a difference between the meaning. Ahmad means the one who praises the most. Jo sab se zyada tarif karne wala ho, usko Ahmad kehte hain. So the one who praises a lot is the one who is Ahmad. So the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam on the heavens, his name is Ahmad because he praises Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the most in all of Allah's creation. And his name is Muhammad upon earth because it means the one who is praised. The one who is often praised. So on, on the dunya, in the earth, the Prophet ﷺ is known as Muhammad ﷺ because the entire creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praises the Prophet ﷺ on earth. So he is Muhammad ﷺ. Now Prophet Isa salam is the final prophet of the Bani Israel. Now, Bani Israel are a particular group of people, a particular nation, which has been mentioned many times in the Holy Quran. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that we chose them, we gave them fadila upon the entire alameen. Ya Bani Israel, adhkuru ni'mati allati an'amtu alaykum wa anni faddaltukum ala alameen. So, who are Bani Israel? Israel was actually the nickname, you can say, of Prophet Ya'qub who is known as Jacob, Prophet Jacob. And Prophet Ya'qub was the son of who? Prophet Ishaq salam, Isaac. And Prophet Ishaq salam, was the son of Prophet Ibrahim salam. So Prophet Ya'qub salam, is the grandson of Prophet Ibrahim salam. So Ya'qub salam, Ibrahim salam ke pote hain. Or unka naam jo tha, jo unko diya gaya, wo tha Israel. So his name was given to him as Israel. And in that particular uh, language, it meant the servant of God. Or it meant someone who was devoted to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Israel. Now, the children of Prophet Yaqub alayhi salam, the children of Prophet Yaqub, he had approximately 12 sons. And we know about Prophet Yusuf alayhi salam as being the youngest so this is where you have the 12 tribes of israel the 12 tribes of israel okay so the bani israel are all of the offspring of prophet yaqub alayhi salam so prophet after prophet came within the offspring within the lineage of prophet yaqub alayhi salam to hazrat yaqub alayhi salam ki nasl mein kai anbiya ikram aaye daud alayhi salam aaye sulaiman alayhi salam aaye Zakariya salam aaye, Yahya alayhi salam aaye, usme Musa alayhi salam bhi aaye, or Isa alayhi salam bhi aaye. So many prophets came within the Bani Israel, and Prophet Isa alayhi salam is the last prophet of the Bani Israel. So Isa alayhi salam jo hain, wo Bani Israel ke akhri nabi hain, akhri paygambar hain. Our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam is from Bani Ismail, because Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam he had Ismail alayhi salam, his eldest son, and then he had Prophet Ishaq alayhi salam. So Prophet, from Prophet Ishaq alayhi salam was Prophet Yaqub alayhi salam, and then you have the, uh, the Bani Israel. But from Ismail alayhi salam, 
in that lineage, our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the only Prophet, but he is the last Prophet. So Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala blessed Bani Ismail uh, with the last Prophet of Allah, Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam. And this is where we get this um, type of difference and this, this, you can say a conflict, a bone of contention between the Jews and the Muslims. Okay, and it's a historical one because they were expecting Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to come within Bani Israel. But Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala chose Bani Ismail. And because of this, even the people who were at that time waiting for the arrival of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, because he came in Bani Ismail, they rejected the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when the Prophet Alaihi Salatu Wasallam came. So we find that this particular type of conflict that is taking place in the world is one of the main causes is this cause uh, where they were expecting the Prophet ﷺ to come but through Bani Israel but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent, sent him through Bani Ismail. So hence within the Arabs Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the Prophet ﷺ and gave him them that honor. Although the Prophet ﷺ came as a Prophet for everyone but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave the Arabs this honor that he came from their particular uh, race. Okay? Now, all of the prophets, they came with the same message. So this is something that we need to, um, when we speak to our Christian friends, when we speak to our Jewish friends or other non-Muslim friends, we should first of all understand this, that Islam did not begin with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Islam is a message, is a deen, which came with the first Prophet, Prophet Adam Alayhi Salam. They all came with the same message, they all came with the same deen. Although the laws changed over time, rules changed, ahkam changed, what was lawful, what was prohibited, lekin ye jo deen hai hamara, ye huzur ke saath shuru, Nahi hua, balke Hazrat Adam alayhi salam se ye deen chala a raha hai. So every prophet that came, they propagated the same deen, they propagated the same message that there is only one God that is worthy of worship. There is only one God that is worthy of worship, the Creator Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, so all of them came with this uh, same message. Now, because our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam is the last prophet, there is no prophet to come after the Prophet sallallahu No new prophet can come. Now it's the duty upon the, this ummah, it's the duty upon the followers of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam to give this invitation, to invite others, to carry out this duty that was given to the prophets before, which is to invite people towards the deen and do it in the most wisest way. Ud'u ila sabili rabbika bil hikmah, invite people with wisdom. Wal mu'izatil hasana, with good, good uh, nasiha, with good advice, with good speech. Wajadilhum billati hi ahsan. And even if you do get into a debate, do it in the best of ways. Don't do it in a way that, you know, there's arguments, there's fighting. This is not the way. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is doing our tarbiyah and telling us invite people with wisdom. So, in order to have this wisdom is if we know about the teachings of our own deen. If we know the teachings about, about our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and that common message that every Prophet came and gave. So this deen, Allah says, we completed it in the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but it's a deen that came with every Prophet. So we believe in all of the Prophets and we believe in all of the books and scriptures that were given to other prophets. So we have the four famous books that we know about. Uh, who, who knows the books? Someone tell me. Let me ask. No, I want to ask. A, do you know all of the books? No? Yes? Do you want to tell me? How many books do we believe in? Okay. Anyone here? Around here? Have you remembered? Yes. Okay, tell us then. MashaAllah. Very good. Okay, so Zabur, Torah, Injil, and 
the Holy Quran. Okay, Zubur was revealed to who? Prophet Dawood alayhi salam. Injil was revealed to who? Uh, sorry, Taurat was revealed to who? Musa alayhi salam. Injil was revealed to? Isa alayhi salam. And the Holy Quran? To Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So we believe in all of these books, but we believe it, what we believe about them is that they were true books revealed by Allah to the Prophets and the original books that were revealed to them, apart from the Holy Quran, the other books have been changed. And one of the reasons is because Allah did not take responsibility of protecting them. The only book Allah took responsibility for protecting is the Holy Quran. So we find that the same Quran is read uh, by all of the Muslims across the globe. There may be variations in translation. That's because if you translate from one language into the other, there, there can be uh, somewhere where you have mistranslated a word or you have given uh, a different translation because that word had uh, a different meaning and that, that can happen, okay? But the Arabic itself is not changed, okay? So everyone is reading that same uh, Holy Quran. Okay, uh, but when we talk about, there is a, uh, a bit of a contentious issue on uh, the different qira'at, the different recitations of the Holy Quran. The Holy Quran was revealed in different uh, wujuh of qira'at, meaning the different recitations. This was because of the different dialects and accents of the uh, Arabs. So for example, in the English language, even in Punjabi Urdu, we have different accents. The more north you go, the accent becomes more stronger, right? Sometimes Scotland, you can't understand what they're saying because they have a very strong uh, accent. And even some of the words are different. Um, w when we say uh, small, they say we. Is that true? Yeah, right? Yeah, we say small, they say we. Yeah, a wee bit. We say little bit. Yeah? So the accents and the, the dialects, they all change in, in the area that you are coming from. So. Ireland has a different accent, Wales has a different accent. Come down to London, you know, we miss our R's and T's, yeah? And if you go towards Birmingham and Bradford, you can sense some type of Urdu within that English, right? So the accents vary, they, they differ. So even the Arabs, they have different accents. Uh, for example, in um, Egypt, Egyptians, they don't say um, Jim, but they say Gim. Okay, they say Gim. So Juma, they will say Gumma, right? Uh, um, also in Yemen, Yemenis, um, instead of the Qaf, they say Ghaf. Yeah? So Qaf, they say Ghaf. I know we have a Yemeni brother here. Is that true? Yeah. Okay, so. Yeah. yeah so, so different accents, different dialects. So this is the reason why there is a difference. But. The entire Ummah was made to be united upon the Qurayshi dialect and this was the dialect, the accent of the Prophet So in the time of Sayyidina Uthman anhu, the third Khalifa of Islam, all of the Ummah was united upon this dialect and this is the actual prints and publications that you find of the Holy Quran. They all come in the Qurayshi dialect. The other accents and dialects, they are only alive now in the science of Tajweed, in the science of recitation. Okay, so if you want to become uh, a, a great Qari like Qari Abdul Basit, uh, Abdul Samad Rahimahullah Ta'ala or other great uh, Qurra, they studied all of these different uh, Qira'at and uh, different uh, styles of uh, reading. But they all write. Okay, but it's to do with Arabic grammar as well. There's a lot of grammar involved because of the reason uh, why there's different recitations. Okay, now Isa alayhi salam, before we come to Prophet Isa alayhi salam, we have to speak about the family of Imran. May Allah be pleased with him, okay? Surah Ali Imran. Now, the family of Imran basically is an introduction to appreciate Prophet Isa alayhi salam. So the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Holy Quran, he builds up to speak about Prophet Isa alayhi salam. He actually begins with the family, the Al of Imran. And this is to appreciate who Isa alayhi salam was, the background that he came from, the family that he came from. So when Hazrat Isa alayhi salam ka bayan shuru hota hai, usse pehle Allah ta'ala Al-Imran ka bayan karta hai. 
تاکہ ہمیں پتہ چل جائے کہ عیسیٰ علیہ السلام یہ ایک انٹروڈکشن ہے ان کے تعارف کے لیے کہ ان کی فیملی کون تھی سو ویئر ڈڈ دئی کم فرام سو وین وی اسپیک اباؤٹ سم ون وین وی اسپیک اباؤٹ سم ون آنربل وی لک ایٹ دے بیک گراؤنڈ وی لک ایٹ دے ٹیچرز وی لک ایٹ دے پیرنٹس رائٹ اینڈ وی اسپیک اباؤٹ دم تو پھر ان کی تعریف میں تھوڑا سا اضافہ ہوتا ہے رائٹ سو دی آن اینڈ دا عزا دیٹ وی ہیو دیٹ از آلسو انکریز تو اس سے عزت بھی بڑھتی ہے اس سے سو دیٹ آن دیٹ وی ریسیو سو وی نیڈ ٹو اسپیک اباؤٹ دا فیملی آف عمران بیکاز اللہ ان دا ہول ہیز نیم دا ہول چیپٹر ان دا ہولی قرآن کولڈ سورہ آل عمران ایک مکمل صورت کا نام ہے آل عمران دا تھرڈ چیپٹر آف دا ہولی قرآن سورہ آل عمران ناؤ اللہ سبحان ہوا تھا سے ان اللہ حسطف آدم ان ڈیڈ اللہ چوز آدم علیہ السلام و نوح نوح علیہ السلام آل ابراہیم دا فیملی آف ابراہیم علیہ السلام و آل عمران اینڈ دا فیملی آف عمران علی العالمین اپن دی انٹائر پیپو رائٹ اپن دی انٹائر مین کائنڈ اللہ سبحان ہوا تعالیٰ چوز دم رائٹ گیو دم آنا آدم علیہ السلام بینگ دا فرسٹ ہیومن بینگ and the entire human race began with prophet adam alayhi salam nuh alayhi salam he was the first person to actually come with a sharia right began to make things lawful and unlawful so prophet nuh alayhi salam and then we find ali ibrahim because of all of the prophets that came through um, the lineage of prophet ibrahim alayhi salam and ali imran the family of imran now family of imran who was imran Imran was the father of Who sorry Okay who says Isa alayhi salam Father of Sayyida Maryam salamullahi alayha Right? So he is the father of Sayyidah Maryam, the mother of Prophet Isa. So what does that make him to Isa alayhi salam? Grandfather. Okay, which we call Nana. Yeah? He is the Nana of Prophet Isa alayhi salam. Now, um, Imran, may Allah be pleased with him, he passed away before Sayyidah Maryam was actually born. Now, the Holy Quran speaks about the mother of of Sayyidah Maryam. The mother of Sayyidah Maryam, her name was either Hanna or Hanna or Hunna. Okay? This was her name. Uh, and we know in the English equivalent, Hanna. Yeah? So this was the name of Sayyidah Maryam's mother. She made a vow, she made a nadar to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Oh Allah, if I have a child, right, and she was expecting or she wanted a son because she made a vow that if she has a child, she would give this child for the service of the uh, Baytul Muqaddas, okay? So for the service of, you can say, Masjid Al-Aqsa, right, the holy sanctuary uh, within the Baytul Muqaddas within Jerusalem. So she made this vow, she made this nadar. So she made this nadar that I have a son اپنی بچے کو اس گھر کی مسجد کے لیے خدمت کے لیے وقف کروں گی اوکے اینڈ از آلسو مینشن ان دا تفاصیر دیٹ شی کوڈ ناٹ ہیو چلڈرن اینڈ شی کیم بیکیم ویری اولڈ اینڈ ایٹ ون ٹائم شی سو دیٹ دیر واز اے برڈ ہو واز فیڈنگ ہے ینگ ونس اینڈ شی میڈ دس دعا ٹو اللہ سبحان ہوا تعالیٰ اللہ دس برڈ یو ہیو you know, given a child to this bird, and this bird actually has so much tawakkul upon you. So oh Allah, as being your servant, also grant me a child. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala listened to that dua of hers, and she became expectant with a child. Now when she made this uh, vow, when Sayyidah Maryam was born, she said, oh Allah, فَلَمَّا وَدَعْتْهَا قَالَتْ رَبِّي إِنِّي وَدَعْتُهَا أُنْثَا When a daughter was born, she said, Oh Allah, Wallahu a'lamu bima wada'at, wa laysa dhakaru kal untha. She said, Oh Allah, I have had a daughter. Now how can I fulfill that nadar? How can I fulfill that vow? Jo mene nadar maani wo, me kaise isko pura karungi? Because in that time, it was common that boys were able to serve uh, the masjid and the girls or the women could not. 
So she said, oh Allah, how, am I, how can I fulfill this vow? I've had a daughter. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say, Laysa dhakarakal untha. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala actually knows that it's a daughter, but he said that this girl is actually, even a boy cannot be compared to this girl. Okay, so the greatness of this girl, uh, Sayyidah Maryam, that even a male cannot be uh, equivalent to her. All right, Laysa dhakarakal untha. And the Prophet والسلام, said that there have been many great men. There have been many complete and perfect men, but there have only been four great and complete perfect women. And the four that the Prophet والسلام, mentioned was one, Sayyidah Maryam والسلام, Sayyidah Asiya bint Mazahim, who was the foster mother of Prophet Musa والسلام, the wife of Fir'aun. Uh, she became uh, a believer Muslim uh, after. So she is one of those women. Sayyidah Khadija Al-Qubra radiallahu ta'ala anha, the beloved wife of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and Sayyidah Fatima bint Muhammad radiallahu ta'ala an sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sayyidah Fatima, the daughter of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa So these four great women. So Sayyidah Maryam is counted amongst those four great uh, uh, women. So after she made this vow, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to her, or oh, before that actually, this name that Maryam, this name was actually given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it means the servant of Allah, the servant of God, someone who's devoted to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this name hai Maryam, ye bhi Allah ta'ala ki taraf se aya. Okay? وَإِنِّي سَمَّيْتُهَا مَرْيَمْ Allah says in the Holy Quran. وَإِنِّي عُعِيذُهَا بِكَ وَذُرِّيَّتَهَا مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ And then Sayyidah Hanna, she made dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Oh Allah, I seek your protection with regards to this daughter of mine and also her offspring, also her children from the shaytan, shaytan who is the cursed one. So when... The Prophet والسلام, said that every child that is born, every child that is born, the reason for their crying when they come into this world is because the shaitan touches them. The shaitan touches them. The Prophet والسلام, said there have been two children that the shaitan did not touch. That was Sayyidah Maryam والسلام, and Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam because the mother of Sayyidina Maryam made a dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala oh Allah protect them from the touch of shaitan so they were protected but our prophet alayhi salatu was salam when he was asked about uh, you know because the prophet alayhi salatu mentioned that every person has a qareen with them has a shaitan with them right and he whispers bad things to them uh, and the Sahaba asked the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi even yourself, the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said, the shaitan that was with me, Allah made him a Muslim. Allah made him a Muslim because of me, so he only says good things to me. Okay, so again, uh, the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, because he is the uh, greatest of Allah's creation and the greatest of the Prophets, Therefore, a virtue that has been given to other prophets, all of those virtues collectively have been given to the Prophet The only reason I mention this is because I don't want anyone to have some doubt. Okay, so when we say this, but, but Allah here is uh, telling us, or the dua, the Prophet is telling us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted it. And these two children, Sayyidah Maryam and also Prophet Isa alayhi salam, they were saved from the touch of shaitan at the time of birth. Allah accepted that dua. Then what happened? The, when she, she was given in the custody of Prophet Zakaria alayhi salam. Now Prophet Zakaria alayhi salam is also from the family of Imran. Okay, Prophet Zakaria alayhi salam. Who is Zakaria alayhi salam? He was, he's a prophet of Allah, but he was married to the sister of Sayyidah Hanna. Okay, so he was married to the Khala, the maternal aunt of Sayyidah Maryam. He was married to the maternal aunt of Sayyidah Maryam, which we call Khala in our language. Yeah. So Prophet Zakaria alayhi salam, the uncle of Sayyidah Maryam, he took her into his custody. 
and he began to look after her and she was given a particular a room or a chamber within uh, the Masjid Al-Aqsa. And Prophet Zakaria salam, used to write the wahi that he used to receive from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he used to teach people from that wahi, that revelation. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that when she was in the custody of uh, Prophet Zakaria salam, what did he find? كُلَّمَا دَخَلَ عَلَيْهَا زَكَرِيَّ الْمِحْرَابَ وَجَدَ عِنْدَهَا رِزْقَ he used to find Sayyidah Maryam السلام, with fruits and in the time of summer she would have the fruits of winter and in the time of winter she used to have the fruits of summer. So when, he, when Zakaria السلام, saw this that out of season fruits she would have and she would be eating from that. When he asked her, where did you get this from? She said, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inna Allah yarzuku man yasha'u bi ghayri hisab. Indeed, Allah gives without any uh, hisab, without any limit. So Prophet Zakaria alayhi salam himself was always wishing to have a child. He could not have a child either because he had become old and his um, wife also was barren, could not have children. So when he saw this, Hunalika da'a Zakaria Rabbah. The Holy Quran says that where he found Sayyidah Maryam with those fruits, Hunalika da'a Zakaria, at that place, at that place, Hunalika, Zakaria alayhi salam began to make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Although Zakaria alayhi salam was making dua and he, and he was in the masjid, he could have made it anywhere, but he knew that this place where this uh, saint of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, where she is and where she is um, doing her ibadah and worship and Allah is giving her fruits. So it's her karama, basically. This is a miracle, a karama. Okay, awliya of Allah have karamat. Okay, and they're different to mu'jazat. Well, this is a separate subject, but where he found these fruits with her, at that place, the Quran says, hunalika da'a zakariya, at that place he made dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because he knew that this, this place is a blessed place. This person is a blessed individual. The possibility of my dua has been increased to be accepted. Okay? The possibility is that the dua to be accepted. So he made dua there. Hunalika da'a zakariya rabba. Qala rabbi habli min ladunka zurriyatan tayyiba inna ka sami'u dua. Oh Allah, grant me a child, a pious offspring. Indeed, you are the one who is the listener to du'as. The Quran says when he was making this du'a, the Quran actually says, qa'imun yusalli. He was praying, he was standing and he was praying. qa'imun yusalli fil mihrab. The angels, fanadathul malaika. The angels called out to him and they said to him, Inna Allah, Anna Allah yubashiruka bi Yahya. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses you with Prophet Yahya. So Prophet Yahya alayhi salam is the son of Prophet Zakaria alayhi salam and the Christians know him as John the Baptist. Okay, Prophet Yahya alayhi salam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says um, that he will be the one who will do tasdeeq of Prophet Isa alayhi salam. He will believe and he would be the first to believe in Prophet Isa alayhi salam. So they're cousins, but they are both prophets. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says he will be the one who will be the first to do tasdeeq to confirm the nabuwa, the prophethood of Isa alayhi salam. So see how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is building this up to mention Prophet Isa alayhi salam. So he speaks about say the, Mar uh, the mother of Sayyidah Maryam, he speaks about Sayyidah Maryam, then he talks about the Qarama, then he talks about Prophet Zakaria, he talks about Prophet Yahya, and he praises Prophet Yahya in the Holy Quran, the different characteristics of Prophet Yahya alayhi salam. Now Prophet Yahya alayhi salam, uh, there's a, you know, if you look at his, uh, what has been narrated about Prophet Yahya alayhi salam, time's going fast, I don't have time to speak about it, maybe for another time, but both Prophet Zakaria alayhi salam and Prophet Yahya alayhi salam were martyred, they were killed. And there is a very, um, you know, a, a, a very heart-touching story in regards to Prophet Yahya alayhi salam, Prophet Zakaria alayhi salam. Inshallah, we'll speak about that on another occasion because uh, I don't have time to uh, go through that. So we spoke about Sayyidah Maryam alayhi salam, the meaning of her, and there's a whole chapter in the Holy Quran, which is chapter 19. 
And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that he chose her Inna Allah hastafaki wa tahharaki wa stafaki ala nisa ila alameen Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala purified her and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose her above all of the uh, women nisa ila alameen okay the contemporaries of her time now uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says here wa tahharaki we purified her this could mean that purified from the accusation that people made uh, about her in regards to having Prophet Isa alayhi salam without uh, a husband. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned the bara'a, uh, the mentioned uh, uh, her purity in the Holy Quran. And also uh, the purity here also means that she was not like other women. She was not like other women. So something that the women experience, okay, on a, on, on a monthly basis, she, she was free from that. Okay, and this was also this is also about Sayyida Fatima radiallahu anha. Uh, the Prophet ﷺ mentioned that she also did not experience uh, this type of impurity, um, and and it's the same with Sayyida Maryam salam. And she's a role model for for the women. So look into a seerah. This is for our sisters and our mothers. They should look into the seerah of Sayyida uh, Maryam. Someone and Allah describes her as being someone who was uh, devoted. Uh, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we know that in Surah Maryam itself when Jibreel alayhi salam came in the form of a man to Sayyidah Maryam and what she said at that time that fear Allah you know قَالَتْ إِنِّي أَعُوذُ بِالرَّحْمَانِ مِنْ كَيْنْ كُنْتَ تَقِيَّةً and she said indeed I seek refuge with Allah and you should also fear Allah if you are a pious God-fearing person so at that moment we, we know about her taqwa Allah mentions about her taqwa Patience and reliance on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We also find examples of this mentioned in Surah Maryam. So I do urge everyone to read um, Surah Maryam with translation. Okay, we come to the birth of Prophet Isa alayhi salam. Do read the ayat at the bottom, uh, you know, whilst you're looking at the screen. So Prophet Isa alayhi salam's birth is a miraculous birth mentioned in the Holy Quran. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala actually talks about the whole birth of the Prophet Isa alayhi salam. Uh, in the Holy Quran in various places in Surah Al Imran as well as in uh, Surah uh, Maryam. Now, Prophet Isa alayhi salam, we said, is born without a father. Prophet Adam alayhi salam is born without mother and, and father. And Sayyidah Hawa alayhi salam, she, was, she came into existence without a mother. Okay, so. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's qudra, it, you can see it from every angle. The rest of the creation of, or the human race was born with a mother and father. But Sayyidah Adam alayhi salam was born without a mother and father. Sayyidah Hawa was born without a, or came into existence without a mother because she was born from the rib of, or she came into existence from the rib of Adam alayhi salam. And there was only one possibility left. That was without a father, so Prophet Isa alayhi salam was born without a father. So this was to show that Allah is capable of anything. Allah has the power for anything. Okay, so his birth is miraculous. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala actually says in the Quran, uh, and, and, and this talks about in Surah Ali Imran, that if you have doubt, إِنَّ مَثَلَ عِيسَى إِنَّ اللَّهِ كَمَثَلِ آدَمْ خَلَقَهُ مِن تُرَاب ثُمَّ قَالَ لَهُ كُنْ فَيَكُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to the Christians that if you have doubt uh, and if you claim that Prophet Isa is the son of God, then what do you say about Adam alayhi salam? He was born without a mother and father. So he has more right, Adam alayhi salam has more right to be called the son of God than Isa alayhi salam because he was created from without mother and father. Okay, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that in the Holy Quran. Now Isa alayhi salam is known as Ruhullah, the spirit of Allah. The reason why is because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Jibreel alayhi salam with this ruh, with this uh, spirit of the Prophet, uh, of Prophet Isa in this soul, and Jibreel alayhi salam blew into Sayyidah Maryam. And when this soul was, uh, he breathed into Sayyidah Maryam alayhi salam, then thereafter uh, she became expectant with Prophet Isa alayhi salam. And Prophet Isa alayhi salam spoke when he was a baby. Okay, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that he will speak when he, when he said to Sayyidah Maryam, 
uh, that you will have a child and he will speak when he is a child and he will also speak when he is older. So he will speak when he's a child as a baby. So he will speak when he's in the cradle and he will speak when he is uh, older. So Allah, he spoke when he was a baby and this again is one of the miracles given to Prophet Isa alayhi salam. His name was given to him by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Hazrat Isa alayhi salam ka naam bhi jo hai ye Allah ki taraf se aya. So in Surah Ali Imran, uh, Sayyidah Maryam was told that you will have a child. His name will be Masih Isa ibn, Isa, Isa ibn Maryam. He will be known as Messiah, the Masih. Okay, Isa ibn Maryam. Isa, the son of Maryam, salamullahi alayha. So this brings me on to the part, what were the different names and titles of Isa alayhi salam? The first is Isa ibn Maryam, the, his actual name Isa, Prophet Isa alayhi salam. Second, he was known as Masih, the Messiah. Now this Messiah, Masih, is actually the, the, the meaning of Christ. Okay, in, in um, Latin or in Hebrew, okay, it, it is Christ. It means the same thing. What does Masih mean? Masih means Messiah means the anointed one. There are different interpretations of this. Why is it Masih? What does it mean? One is that when Isa alayhi salam was born, he was born in a state that the angels had rubbed oil on his body. So he was born whilst he was, had this oil rubbed on his body. So he's known as the one who was anointed. Second meaning that is given for Masih, the anointed one, is that one of the miracles given to Isa alayhi salam was that he would uh, touch or he would rub his hand on those who were sick and they would become cured. So because of this touching, this rubbing, he was known, known as Masih because it's from the word Masih. The third reason they give is because he was protected from the touch of shaitan. So that's another reason why he's known as Masih. Okay, so the, the, the Messiah. So again, Christ, so bear in mind when Christians say Christ, Christ meaning is Masih, the Messiah. Okay, and in Arabic it is Masih. Okay. The third name or title he's been given is Kalimatullah. The word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why is he known as word of Allah? Because everyone else has been, has come into existence, has come into this world through uh, the mother and the father. Okay. But Isa alayhi salam, because he was born without a father, he was actually born with the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Kun and he became. Kun fayakun. Okay. And bear in mind, Allah is not dependent on this word kun. He just is a word of expression to say how easy it is for Allah to bring something into existence. He's created the entire creation uh, by this expression. It's just a way of explaining. He doesn't need to say it. When Allah makes an irada for something, when Allah wishes something, it happens. When he makes the irada, intends something, it happens. Okay, he doesn't need to say the word kun. He's not dependent on it. It's just a way for us to understand this. That is, that's how easy it is for Allah. So Allah kun ke lafz pe muhtaj nahi hai. Ye bas ek hamare samjane ke liye hai ke itna asan hai Allah ke liye ke jaise hum kehte na ho ja to ho jata hai. Bas ek hamare samjane ke liye hai. Allah is lafz pe muhtaj nahi hai. Agar wo irada kare to wo ho jata hai. Okay, so this is uh, important. And Ruhullah, as I explained, he's a spirit of Allah subhanahu because his ruh was sent uh, and, and was directly put into Sayyidah Maryam alayhi salam. Now what are his teachings? There are some t uh, common teachings of his, the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is important in, we Muslims believe that Prophet Isa alayhi salam himself is not God. Prophet Isa alayhi salam is not the son of God. All right. Isa alayhi salam actually came as a prophet of Allah. And Isa alayhi salam himself taught that you should worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inna Allah rabbi wa rabbukum fa'budhu. Hada siratun mustaqeem. Indeed, my Lord and your Lord is Allah. So worship him. This is the straight path. Okay? This is the straight path. So he did not come to make people worship him. Alright? And he did not come to uh, teach people that he's God or he's the son of God. But rather, he is the prophet of Allah. And he worshipped the same 
uh, God that we are ta taught to worship, we are told to worship. Okay, so to worship uh, Allah subhanahu wa and the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Came to tell about his prophethood that I'm a prophet of Allah. Qala inni Abdullah wa atani al kitaba wa ja'alani nabiyya. I am a servant of Allah and he has given me the book and I have been made a prophet. Okay. He confirmed what came before. So Isa alayhi salam came to confirm what came before. So Musa alayhi salam's teachings that came, the Torah that came, he came to confirm that he was a true prophet, his teachings were true. And mentioned in the Holy Quran, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, Prophet Isa alayhi salam is, is saying that I came to confirm what is before and some of the things that were halal, I've come to make haram. So we know that the, different, the difference between a Nabi and a Rasul here as well, you know, 124,000 approximately prophets, but not all of them were Rasuls, okay, there's a difference. There are approximately 313 Rasuls. There's a difference between them a Rasul is someone who brings a new Sharia, brings new laws. Whereas prophets, Nabi only, who is not a Rasul, does not bring a new Sharia. He, he teaches the same of what the previous prophet has taught. Or another difference is a Rasul is given a book or a scripture. Other prophets who are not Rasul, they are not given this. Or the third is Nabis are given revelation through dreams. And the Rasuls are given revelation through dreams as well as in a wakeful state with the angel coming to give them. There's many other uh, differences that are mentioned between a Rasul and a Prophet. So every Nabi, uh, every Rasul is a Nabi, but every Nabi is not a Rasul. So Isa alayhi salam was a Nabi as well as a Rasul. Prophet Yahya alayhi salam was only a Nabi but not a Rasul. So therefore, Isa alayhi salam, although both are prophets, both have been praised, Isa alayhi salam has more virtues than Prophet Yahya alayhi salam. And this is why we find that Allah says, Yahya alayhi salam will confirm the prophethood of Isa alayhi salam. And Abdullah bin Abbas radiallahu anhu, he says in the tafsir of this, that whilst um, Prophet Yahya alayhi salam was in the, because uh, they were born at the same time, near the same time. Because Zakaria salam, made dua for Yahya alayhi salam. So he, his wife became expectant with Prophet Yahya alayhi salam. Similar time to Sayyidah Maryam. So they actually used to recognize each other whilst they were in the stomach of their mother. Prophet Yahya alayhi salam would recognize Prophet Isa alayhi and they used to talk to each other. This is mentioned by Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu in the tafsir of this. And they used to actually speak to each other. And this is where Prophet Yahya alayhi salam confirmed the Nabuwa of Prophet Isa alayhi salam. And there's also a mention that he actually prostrated to Isa alayhi salam. In that time, it was allowed to prostrate to uh, people as well. But in this Sharia is for, for, forbidden. In that time, it was allowed. Okay, so this is how he confirmed uh, Prophet Isa alayhi salam. He taught about the life hereafter and its preparation. All of the prophets spoke about Yawmul Qayyamah. All of the prophets gave this teaching. Worship and charity, he taught, he taught about giving zakat, he talked about salah. As Allah mentions in the Quran, uh, about when Isa Islam spoke when he was a baby, Atani al kitaba wa ja'alani nabiyya wa ja'alani mubarakan. He has made me mubarak, blessed wherever I am. Uh, and he has also commanded me, wa um, ja'alani mubarakan. Who's a hafiz here? Ainama kuntu wa bis salati wa zakati ma dumtu hayya. And he has commanded me to give zakat and he has commanded me to pray as long as I am alive. So, this is one of the teachings of Isa al Islam. Haram and uh, halal and haram, every prophet taught this. He taught the people the book, he taught them how to apply, and he did tazkiyah of the people, purified the people. Uh, some of the miracles uh, of Isa alayhi salam, inshallah, we only have, I think, uh, two, two, two more slides. If you give me another 10 minutes, then we inshallah finish. Uh, the miracles of Isa alayhi salam, there are approximately seven which are mentioned in the Holy Quran. Approximately seven miracles. Saat mu'ajazat jo hain Isa alayhi salam ke, wo quran e paak mein iska bayan hai. Number one, he spoke in the cradle, he spoke when he was a baby. Sayyidah Maryam alayhi salam, when she came to the people, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to her, 
دیٹ یو سی دیٹ یو آر فاسٹنگ کہ مریم علیہ السلام کو کہا کہ آپ کہیں میں نے روزہ رکھا چپ کا روزہ رکھا ہوا ہے ام فاسٹنگ آئی ایم ناٹ اسپیکنگ سو دیٹ ٹائپ آف فاسٹ واز ٹو ریمین سائلنٹ سو دین وٹ شی ڈیڈ از پوائنٹیڈ ٹو ووڈس عیسیٰ علیہ السلام ان دی کریڈو اوکے اینڈ دے سیڈ ہاؤ کین وی اسپیک ٹو سم ون ہو از اے بیبی ان دا کریڈو اینڈ شی سیڈ قالو کیف نقل من کان فلم دی سبیا شی از پوائنٹیڈ عیسیٰ علیہ السلام اسپوک Okay, Qala inni Abdullah Tani al-Kitab wa Jalla. He gave a whole khutbah. Okay, and this is mentioned in Surah Maryam. So this is his first miracle. Second, he cured sufferers from lepr- uh, 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 from leprosy, a particular type of contagious skin disease. Okay, uh, Isa alayhi salam would cure them from this disease, and there was no such cure for this type of disease. And we know that. Every prophet is given a miracle according to the phenomena of its time. Joe's وقت کا جو کمال ہوتا ہے نا اس کمال کے مطابق نبی کو معجزہ دیا جاتا ہے سو دس دا فنومن آف دیٹ ٹائم واز میڈیسن سو عیسیٰ علیہ السلام واز گیون دس میرکل آف کیورنگ پیپل سو دوز دیٹ وا سفرنگ فرام دس ٹائپ آف ڈیزیز تھرڈ پیپل ہو آر بورن بلائنڈ جو پیدائشی نابینے تھے دا پروفٹ عیسیٰ علیہ السلام وڈ ریسٹور دا آئی سائٹ ہی وڈ گیو دیم دا آئی سائٹ بیک ود ادن آف اللہ سبحان و تعالیٰ Fourth miracle, he brought the dead back to life. So Isa alayhi salam, he could bring the dead back to life. Murdon ko zinda karna. Number five, he breathed life into birds that were made from clay. So Isa alayhi salam, he would make, um, you know, out of clay, he would make uh, birds and then he would breathe life into them. Okay, and this was one of the miracles that were given to Prophet Isa alayhi salam. Number six, he was given knowledge of the unseen. In, in other words, Uh, what is mentioned in the Quran, he would know what people have eaten. When they have come from home, he would know what they have eaten and what they have stored in their houses. Not only what they've eaten, but what they've left behind as well. So he was given this miracle that he, he knew this. And this was obviously uh, news of the unseen. People hadn't seen, people wouldn't know, but he would. And this was given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to him. Number seven is the Ma'ida, the table spread of food. A whole chapter is dedicated to Surah Al-Ma'ida, where the uh, followers of Prophet Isa alayhi salam requested that a Ma'ida, a table spread of food, like Dastar Khan, jo hai Allah beje asmano se, and then they couldn't keep up with the conditions that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent. And because they could not keep up with the conditions, Allah punished them and Allah turned them into monkeys and pigs. Okay, because they could not fulfill the conditions and respect uh, the conditions that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent uh, this miracle, this table spread of food with. Can you okay. Can what you, you just said? Okay. I, I just missed it. Which part? What happened when they... About yeah, this, the, the table spread of food. I'm going through it quickly because I'm conscious of the time. Otherwise, uh, okay. it's, it's quite interesting, the whole uh, topic. So the table spread of food, they requested Isa alayhi salam, show us a sign from Allah. And what is the sign they wanted? That ask Allah to send food for us from the heavens. And Isa alayhi salam said, قَالَتْ تَقُوا اللَّهِ إِن كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ He said, fear Allah if you are believers. Because Isa alayhi salam knew if this sign comes from Allah and these people are not able to fulfill the conditions that come with it or respect it, what will happen is Allah will punish them. So Isa alayhi salam said to them, fear Allah, do you know, you know your demand, if you're not able to live up to that, Uh, the demand that you're making, then Allah will punish you. But they said, no, we, you know, we want to affirm that you're a, we believe you're a prophet, but we want to see it. We want to have aynul yaqeen, right? We want to have certainty by looking at and experiencing it. Uh, so Allah subhanahu wa sent this, but with conditions. So one of the condition was that they are not allowed to store up anything, right? They're not allowed to leave anything for tomorrow. So take it away with them and, you know, store it up. They need to have full yaqeen on Allah that Allah will send more food tomorrow. So fully yaqeen on it, full tawakkul and reliance. So that was a condition they couldn't fulfill. Number two, uh, it is also mentioned that uh, one of the condition was that the poor should also be allowed to eat with the rich. But that was a condition they were not able to fulfill. They used to shun away the poor people and the rich. And we, we see this now in the rich are getting richer and the poor are getting poorer. So they, this injustice, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this condition they couldn't live up to, so they were uh, punished. 
So Allah revealed with the conditions, He said, if you do not fulfill the conditions, you will be punished in a way that no other people have been punished before. Uh, so they were turned into monkeys and they were turned into pigs. Okay, but bear this in mind when we say monkeys and pigs, uh, this is important that you understand this. The Prophet ﷺ said that those people who were punished in this way, that they were turned into monkeys and pigs, they did not have any offspring, they did not have children after. So we can't say that the people after also were pigs or they are from the, um, they are the children of pigs or monkeys, we can't say this. Because the Prophet ﷺ said they did not have any children, that punishment came upon those people and it finished with those people, okay? Um, this is about being raised to the heavens. I'm going to quickly say this. Muslims believe Prophet Isa was not killed. Okay, he was not put on the cross. But it was someone who looked like Isa that was put on the cross. Allah changed the appearance and made that person uh, be put on the cross. Isa was raised to the heavens alive. This is mentioned in, uh, in Surah um, uh, Nisa. Okay, that Allah raised him. Uh, when it's time for Easter, inshallah, we're going to speak about more on this. So I'll uh, just quickly go through this. He again will return to earth. So we believe Isa alayhi will come back. And when he will come, when he will return, uh, he will actually descend in the place of Damascus. Okay, the minarets of the white mosque, the, the Umayyad mosque. And that's where he will descend. And at that time, the Antichrist, the Dajjal, uh, you know, he will be waging war with the believers. And the army will be outside of this masjid and uh, the Muslims will be praying the Salah within this masjid. Imam Mahdi, the last Khalifa of the Muslims, he will be there. Isa a.s. will read behind him. And then the, the fight will happen. Dajjal will run away all the way towards Palestine. And Isa a.s. Uh, will kill him there at Babul Lud. So just on that point, we know what's going on in Jerusalem at the moment. Okay. Whatever is happening is, is you know, it's, it's very bad. I mean, we, as Muslims, we can't see what is going on. And it is quite, uh, you know, sometimes you become angry at this and sad that no one is speaking up. But the reality is this, the liberation of Philistine or Jerusalem will not come until the time of Isa alayhi salam. It will not come until the time of Isa alayhi salam. Because all of this is building towards a Dajjal. Things are going to get worse. In this moment in time, all we can do is pray for them, make people aware about them, you know, help in any way we can in terms of aid or whatever. But when we talk about liberation, this will not happen until Prophet Isa alayhi salam comes because we are now moving towards the major signs of day of judgment. Okay? We are moving towards them. And the first major sign of day of judgment will be Dajjal, will be the Antichrist. Okay? So all of this, and so all of this is being prepared for Isa alayhi salam to kill Dajjal in Jerusalem, in, in there. After that, there will be peace. After that, there will be peace. And there will be peace on earth for 40 years when Isa alayhi salam will kill uh, the Antichrist. And the peace will be so much that children will play with snakes. Snakes will not say anything to children. Lions and sheep, they will actually play with each other. Right? That's how much peace there will be. Even in the animals, there will be peace. So this peace that we talk about, it will come with Prophet Isa alayhi salam. In this moment in time, you know, we make sincere du'as to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, in terms of what is going on. But what we do see of what is going on, it's just going to get uh, worse. And may Allah give each and every single one of us istiqama. But this is leading towards that end of time. And Prophet Isa alayhi salam will uh, come. So I've mentioned all this. Um, he will kill the Antichrist. He will live for approximately 40 years. He will get married. He will have a, f a family. And then when uh, peace will be everywhere. When he will pass away, he will be buried next to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He will be next, buried next to the Prophet Alaihi Salatu Wasallam. Even now in Medina Sharif, in the Rosa of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, there is a space which is uh, left empty uh, because Prophet Isa Alaihi Salam will be uh, buried uh, there. Okay? Summary, Prophet Isa is not God, okay? Prophet Isa is not son of God. The Holy Spirit that we talk about is Jibreel alayhi salam. He's known as Ruhul Qudus, okay? So there isn't three in one. So Holy Trinity, we don't believe in. 
okay, meaning three parts of God, God, Son of God, Holy Spirit. There's, you know, Allah is Allah the Creator, Isa alayhi salam is a creation of Allah, he's the prophet of Allah, and the Holy Spirit, which we talk about, is Jibreel alayhi salam, he is known as Ruhul Amin, he is known as uh, the, the Ruh, as mentioned in the Holy Quran. So we worship only Allah, we highly respect Prophet Isa alayhi salam and his beloved mother, Okay, we don't worship Isa alayhi salam, we don't worship his mother, okay, we respect them. There's a difference between respect and difference between, uh, so we respect all of the prophets and saints of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the last thing is obviously, uh, this is relevant, that we are living in a uh, multicultural, multi-faith society. You know, we're living in a uh, society where we're living amongst different faiths. Uh, so it's important that, you know, uh, this type of... Um, you know, we, we say tolerance, and this tolerance uh, comes with understanding. We understand our own deen, you know, and we give this invitation to our Christian friends and Jewish friends that they try to understand our deen. We try to understand what they believe so that we know what we believe, what our boundaries are. I mean, this is important. Obviously, we find what, what, what is going on now, you know, we, we started putting Christmas trees in our house. Where's the limit of that, you know? There's a limit to which we can go to, there's an extent which, in, which we can go to. So it's not about compromising your beliefs, it's not about compromising your deen. To do that, right, we don't have to do that, you know, and, and, and this, we should try to make uh, others understand that. Just as you are not expected to compromise your religion, we are not expected to compromise our faith. But there are many ways, this is why I said in the beginning that wisdom, wisdom is the main thing, wisdom is, uh, is the real thing. And we know we've got this question about uh, saying Merry Christmas and this, this thing that's going around. You know, yes, there are two views, but you know, living in this society as a goodwill gesture, your neighbors or your, your people living in this society, let me make this clear. When you are wishing someone, uh, you know, in regards to their festival, in regards to their celebration, you are not compromising. You, we don't believe he is son of, Prophet Isa is son of God. We don't believe that. We believe he's the Prophet of Allah. And when we say to someone, look, you know, you're having this celebration, right? You know, choose your words wisely, okay? You're, you're having this celebration. And we wish you to have a, you know, good celebration within your family. And, you know, it's your time of celebration. Just as they say Eid Mubarak to us, doesn't mean that they believe uh, and they compromise their belief. It's not that. Okay, and the, in, and the intention is quite, um, you know, uh, important here. We don't compromise our... When the Prophet والسلام, said to the mushrikeen, لَكُمْ دِينُكُمْ وَلِيَدِينَ Right? لَكُمْ دِينُكُمْ وَلِيَدِينَ For you is your religion, and for me is my religion, okay? You know, for you is yours, for me is mine. Here, the Prophet والسلام, isn't pleased with what they are doing. He didn't say, for you is yours, do whatever you wish. Right? Because it's right what you're doing and for me is my way. That's not what it means. The Prophet ﷺ said, you know, for you is your way, right? You know, you're, I'm not going to compromise my belief. You're not going to compromise your belief. Your way is your way. My way is my way. On Yawmul Qayama, we will know who is the truth. And, you know, in the Quran, Allah says, after speaking about this debate with the Christians, right? In Surah Ali Imran, Allah talks about the debate with the Christians, uh, about Isa alayhi salam being the son of God or not. At the end of that debate, Allah is saying to the Prophet, say to the Christians, ta'alo, kul ta'alo, right? Come, let's agree on something which is common between us. All right, come, let's agree on something which is common between us, right? Let's move forward. You know, we, we need to live in this society together. You're residents of this place. We're residents of this place. You know, we've... We've mentioned what our stance is. You've mentioned what your stance is. Now let's come on something which is common. So when you say let's come on something which is common, it doesn't mean you've compromised your belief. Right? And it doesn't mean they've compromised their belief. Do you understand? So live, you know, you have to do things wisely. In this moment in time, especially, it is more important to be wise when we deal with people of other, other faiths. There's been articles now being written and even on media you find everywhere there's this thing going on around oh Muslims are anti-Christmas, Muslims are anti this, Muslims are anti that, okay? You know, we've never ever said to the Christians that, you know, if you do Christmas we'll blow you up or whatever. We know in our Muslim countries, people of minority faith, they are persecuted, all right, which is wrong, okay? If you look in Pakistan, India, whatever, even in Arab countries, the uh, minority faiths, the, un, uh, you know, un par zulm kiya jata hai, they, they are persecuted. This isn't the teaching of Islam. 
And here, majority of people who are Christian in this and is a multi-faith, right? Here, we have to be even more wise because people will perceive our faith in the way that we behave. Already, our religion is looked at something which is extremist and these people are full of hate and these people want to do this. In this moment in time, we have to be wise, all right? We have to be wise and, and, and you know, there are two views about this. It's not that there is only one view. There's two views about this, uh, you know, wishing someone uh, a Merry Christmas. But I, my personal opinion is go with what is more wiser, right? What affects your faith? What affects your religion? The way that the, uh, you know, how you will be affecting your faith by your behavior and the way that you uh, behave. Okay, so that's the need of this time uh, in this moment in time. Okay, so, so the Muslims aren't... I'm not saying compromise and you know do everything. That's what I mentioned in the beginning. You know, uh, there is a limit that we can go to. I am not advocating put Christmas trees in your houses and do whatever they are doing. That's actually partaking in the celebration. But wishing someone else on their faith, you have a good celebration, or that's what merry means. And merry means have a you know a happy rejoicement of whatever you're doing. What does Christmas mean? Christ, like I said before, is referring to Isa alayhi salam. And, and, and again, Christmas is, is more to do with that, you know, that coming together and that, you know, celebrating that birth of Isa alayhi salam. Now, when we saying to someone, have the, you know, a happy celebration of the birth of Isa alayhi salam, we know what they believe. But what is our belief about Isa alayhi salam? That he's the prophet of Allah and the birth of Isa alayhi salam is more important to us than them. That's why I said in the beginning, the birth of Isa alayhi salam is more important to us because the Prophet said, we, I am more closer to Isa alayhi salam. Number two, he, he, takes, he sends salam and peace upon his own birth on the day he was born. Wasalamu alayya yawma wulitu. And the Prophet alayhi salam honored his place of birth. Okay, so the birth of Isa alayhi salam is important to us. All right, so, so please bear this in mind and you know, uh, be wise uh, in these kind of things. Okay, so, that, so that's, that's something that I uh, wanted to uh, speak about. So inshallah we'll finish there. Wa akhiru da'wana anilhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.